Hello guys, my name is Kiki and welcome to my channel. I've been a crafter for almost 30 years, yeah, that love it. But if you want to learn how to decorate your home on a budget while having fun at it, hit the like, subscribe and stay tuned. And we're going to take this frame that you see here and we're going to take it apart like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean that glass and cut. This is the water slide paper. And I'm going to cut those skeletons. And for that, I'm just going to mark it with my pen like this. Then I'm going to cut them so I can get them in the water. Let me cut them. Let me add them to the water. And I'm pressing them down just to make sure that they won't curl on it themselves. Now I'm just going to add it like this to the glass and then I'm gonna work it like that because I added water to my glass so I can move it and slide it until I have reached the placement that I want. Then I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna take a paper towel, clean it, and we're gonna start assembling it. And now we have our glass, our frame, and we're gonna assemble our glass. Then I'm gonna add that paper that I printed out and then I'm gonna close it and here it is. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this one because I'm loving it also. <laughs> I think it looks beautiful. I'm going to take this box that I got from a thrift store and it is a wooden box and we're going to take spackle. Now I'm going to flip it over like this and I'm going to apply that spackle to the sides, only to the sides. And you will see why I'm just applying that to the sides. As you can see, I'm taking a comb and I'm just combing that spackle. Yep, that's weird, <laughs> but it will help our book to look better because you saw the thumbnail. <laughs> now I'm just going to apply it to the front like this and I'm going to comb it again using my comb. And as you can see, I'm applying it all to the front of my box. These boxes, you can get them from any thrift store and they are awesome to work with. You can make anything from a book to a beautiful box. Now I'm just going to comb it and then I'm going to flip it. But now, after I finish with that, I'm going to take this piece of cardboard. And as you can see, I have a sign over there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hot glue gun. <laughs> and I'm going to make that design a little bit raised with that hot glue. We're going to go all around making our design. You can make anything you want. Now that we have it, we're going to take this craft paper and some Mod Podge and this is the satin one and we're gonna just start making it look like leather. <laughs> now I'm just gonna break some of those pieces of paper of that craft brown paper, wet them a little bit on that water and then just apply them on top of my cardboard. We're gonna continue doing that and applying on top of that Mod Podge until we have covered all of our cardboard and that will be the top and bottom of our book. So we're going to continue doing that and we're going to cover it completely like that. Then we're going to apply a coat of Mod Podge on top of all of that to make sure that we have everything covered. And then we're going to let that dry really well over 24 hours so we get that leathery kind of look. And now we're going to take our box again. And as you can see, it's dry. And we're going to take some of this plaster Waverly chalk paint. And we're going to paint those pages. <laughs> yeah, they will be pages. <laughs> so we're going to paint them like this to cover everything. So we have a strong plaster kind of color base to work with. That's what we need. We're going to paint that completely, let it dry really well after we have finished. We're going to also paint the borders of the top like this from the front and the two sides. Then we're going to take our antique wax after it is dry and we're going to apply antique wax to our box. Let me show you. We're going to apply it like this and then I'm going to come back with a wet wipe and we're going to just remove the excess just like this. And that will make it look like a beautiful vintage book. So we're going to clean up the excess. Go around on the top also, on the sides, on front. And that piece that it has in the middle or in the front of the book. 
and out of the box <laughs> and we're gonna paint that now we're gonna take back our piece of cardboard that now looks like leather and some antique wax and we're gonna apply antique wax all over and as you can see this is bringing out the color of the craft paper and also the borders of the broken pieces of paper or torn pieces of paper that we applied and that will make it look like broken kind of leather I just wanted that look <laughs> and here you can see it now I'm gonna take plaster again and we're gonna give it a good dry brush all over just like this and as you can see it's a little bit heavy but don't worry because we're gonna come back with another wet wipe and we're gonna remove the excess just like this after we do that all around our book cover <laughs> we're gonna take our antique wax and we're just gonna apply antique wax on the borders like this and I'm just stippling this on really well and then we're gonna take that after it is dry and we're gonna glue the bottom of our box to the bottom of our cardboard like this then we're gonna glue the top a little bit on the back and then the top only in the front part so we can keep opening our box like this now I'm gonna take this clear acrylic and I'm gonna give it a good coat and here you can see it and it turned out so beautiful just let me know in the comments below what you think about this vintage look because I'm biased and I'm loving it <laughs> dollars each and I decided not to go with candles I just want to make the portraits for that I'm gonna use those circles that I got from Walmart and this beautiful paper that I got from Craftspire I also have this printable and I found it on Google what I'm doing is I'm just cutting it with my exacto knife and here you can see all of them now I'm gonna take those ovals and I'm gonna transfer it to my paper just using the exacto knife just like that and after I do that, I have a perfect oval, but yet I have to work on it a little bit with my exacto knife. Now that I have it, I'm gonna recreate that or cut another one. And I'm gonna use this beautiful paper also from Craspire and cut the bigger one. And that one is an oval plaque from, no, that one is from Dollar Tree. <laughs> now I'm just cutting that paper and then I'm gonna grab my Mod Podge. I'm gonna apply a little bit of Mod Podge like you see here. Then I'm gonna apply my paper like that and I'm gonna use this tool from Mod Podge or Plaid and I'm just gonna make sure that I have my paper flat then I'm gonna take this beautiful decal that I made and you will find that in the description box down below and I'm just gonna measure it with my printable <laughs> and I'm just using a scoring tool that comes from the Cricut you can use anything just to score it then cut it then we're gonna transfer that beautiful decal to the oval let me just make sure that I have it over here and then we're gonna grab it and stick it to our oval like this and then I'm gonna make sure that it is there so I can remove my transfer tape I remove my transfer tape and we have a beautiful frame look at that it's looking so beautiful after that I'm gonna take my printable and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the same sponge that I use to apply the Mod Podge that has a little bit of Mod Podge over there. Apply some Mod Podge on the back. Stick it to my oval that now is a frame. Make sure that it is stuck there and look at that. They look so beautiful. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna edge them because that paper looks so white and those edges need a little bit of roughing with a sandpaper. So I'm gonna take some sandpaper and I'm just gonna go all around it to make sure that this looks a little bit more vintage then I'm gonna take some of this antique wax from Waverly and I'm gonna go all around it like this you will see that I go around it and make sure that some of that antique wax is on my paper as well I'm just gonna go all around the frame like that and then I'm gonna take the picture and I'm gonna start just rubbing some of that paint or antique wax over the paper to make sure that it ages a little bit more that white paper I'm gonna do that with all of my frames and after I do that we will have this beauties let me show you and here you can see them and I only spent four dollars for all of them including paper and everything 
and the candles went for 11 each, so I think I did really well on those. And we're gonna make a bone mobile, <laughs> and we're gonna use this wood, six inch round, and some bones from Walmart, also this fishing line, and then I'm gonna take that fishing line, and I'm gonna cut a long piece so I can start threading my bones. <laughs> yeah, I know it sounds a little bit weird, but we need a lot of that fishing line so we can take the skull and also the vertebrae. Yeah, that piece. <laughs> and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna just go all the way, but we need to make a hole in the top. And for that, I'm using my hot glue gun, but I'm not using the glue, I'm just using the tip to make a hole in the top of that skull just like this and as you can see now it is hot enough that we can make that hole let me just do it and then after we have that hole we're gonna do the same with the piece from the back the vertebrae <laughs> and there you have the top of the skull and now we're gonna take this one and do another hole in the top because in the bottom we have a hole I'm gonna do the same just like this until it goes all the way through and this plastic is pretty thin so you can do this without any issue let me just it's not hot enough <laughs> let me just place it just like this and now we have the hole and then I'm gonna take these bamboo skewer that I have used a lot of times <laughs> and I'm gonna add a little bit of glue on the tip just like this so we can use it as a needle. I'm gonna glue the fishing line over there and we're gonna use this thingy that it is like a needle to go through the skull and also through the vertebrae. And now I'm just making it pointy so we can just fish it through those bones now I'm gonna grab this and I'm just gonna bring or make the hole bigger because it was a little bit too small then I'm gonna make my needle again so I can add that fishing line like this and as you can see we're gonna go through that I'm sorry I'm out of frame but now I just pass it through the vertebra <laughs> that word is really hard to say and then now I'm just adding the skull like that then what I'm gonna do now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a blob of hot glue over here now let's continue with this and the hot glue is dried and as you can see we can pull that string and it isn't moving now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the skull and in the bottom I'm gonna add a wood bead Yep, we need to add wood. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that bead, as you can see, and then I'm going to tie it really well. So this will stop the skull from coming down. Let me just make a nut over here, just like this, and the nails aren't making this any easier. <laughs> but let me make a nut over here. So we can move on to making our beautiful mobile or chandelier. You can call it any way you want, but it is beautiful. <laughs> now, after I do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the excess of that string that I just added. Now, let me show you how this works. You see, it's stopping that from coming off. Now, let's take the other end. And what I'm going to do is I'm showing you this is string there and secured but we're gonna take the wood round and we're gonna make holes on it with our drill as you can see i made one in the middle and i'm gonna make them around and i made 10 and also made four in the middle to hang it. the first thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna add my skull with the vertebrae <laughs> in the middle and i'm gonna make a knot over here and what I'm gonna do with that knot is I'm gonna add hot glue to the top so I can secure it and it is there forever or at least until October 31st. <laughs> now let me just make that knot, add a little bit of hot glue over here, cut the excess 
But first, let's take these hands that they have their, they, their hole <laughs> and tie them with a little bit of that fishing line. Now I'm going to take the feet and I'm going to make a hole like this from the back to the front so we can string it also in that fishing line like this. And we're going to add that fishing line there. And you can use a needle if you're struggling like this. And as you can see, yeah, the struggle was real. <laughs> now I'm going to tie it really well, just like that. And I'm going to cut the excess. And as you can see, I'm going to start adding the hands over here. And I'm going to make a knot. And also, I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue over there. Just to make sure that knot will stay there. Like that. Then I'm going to add the other hand like this. But measuring it with the first one, like that. And then I'm going to repeat the same steps, just making a knot, adding a little bit of hot glue on the top, and cutting the excess. Now, as you can see, we are in the end of our bones. <laughs> and I'm just adding this ones that are the longest, closer to the circle, so it goes down and then goes up again. And that's it for this one. But now... We need to make something to hang it. And for that, I'm just going to measure four of these pieces of the same thread. Or you can use twine if you prefer. And I'm just going to go through this like this. And I'm going to make a knot, but in the bottom part or where the bones are. I'm going to make a knot over here. And I'm going to make a double knot just to make sure that we have that really secured. And then I'm going to add more hot glue. After I cut the excess here, I'm going to repeat that on those four holes that we made so we can have a secure hanger because this is a little bit heavy, not a lot, but just to make sure that it is secure. Now I'm going to take four of them and I'm going to make a knot with a loop so we have something to hang it with. <laughs> And what I'm doing right now is that knot and I'm making a double knot just to make sure it is secured. Then I'm going to cut the excess of those strings and that will be it for this beautiful bone chandelier. <laughs> and here you can see the bottom of it at the end of the video. You will see it completely hanging on my window and it is looking so beautiful. But let me know what you think about this one in the comments below because I'm loving it. <laughs> And we're going to take one of these snow globes from Dollar Tree. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one of those decals that I made using the decal paper water slide. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just submerge that in the water for about 20 seconds. And then what I'm going to do is put it like this. And you will see it was a struggle because it's a round surface. But what I did is I took my scissors. And I just cut a little bit of those edges like this so I can place it in the circle or the top or the side <laughs> of my beautiful, well, now it's just a snow globe, <laughs> but it will be something beautiful. <laughs> now let me just place it like this and work around so we can get it really nicely. Then I'm going to let it dry, but first I'm going to use a paper towel to dry off all the excess water, like this. Then I'm going to take this stand to make it a stand for my beautiful snow globe. And I'm going to add those wood pieces by using a little bit of hot glue, and those are small 4-inch wood rounds. Now that I glued all of that, I'm going to take this piece that it came from a ribbon, and that black thingy came from a spool of, of rope. <laughs> now I'm going to take this flat black and I'm going to spray paint that like this. And now I'm going to take this mold that I have. And I'm going to use my hot glue to make those beautiful designs. Then I'm going to let them dry. But while they are drying, I'm going to take my snow globe. And I'm going to take those cotton balls, and as you can see, I'm just breaking them apart and filling that snow globe with those cotton balls. I'm going to continue doing that until I have reached all to the top, all the way <laughs> to the top. But I added some glitter in between. 
Then I'm going to keep on doing that. Add a little bit more glitter. And then I'm going to take water, one drop of green food coloring and two of yellow. Then I'm going to stir that. And I'm going to add that to my snow globe like that. Then I added a little bit more cotton because it needed it. <laughs> and then I added more of that water, more cotton and more water until we have that full. Then I'm going to just use this cap or that thingy <laughs> and close it. Now it is done and look at that, so cute. Let me just remove these from the mold so I can add them to our stand. And you will see what we're going to do. We're going to just play around with them like this all around our stand. And then I'm going to take my hot glue and I'm going to glue them to the stand just like this. And we're going to continue doing that until we have all of our designs where we want them. Then I'm going to take the flat black spray paint and I'm going to spray paint it again because I went too soon to the spray painting. <laughs> now I'm going to take that spray bottle and this aqua full card paint and I'm going to add some of that to my water bo bottle and then I'm going to mix it really well and that will be our patina and we're going to start with that patina like this. We're going to spray it all around and then we're going to let it dry really well and I'm using my heat tool but yeah that was hot glue so we have to be careful so i'm gonna dry a little bit of that and then i'm gonna let it dry completely before i melt my hot glue thingies <laughs> and then i'm gonna take this metallic gold royal gold paint and i'm gonna give this a beautiful dry brush so it looks like something made out of bronze and for that i'm gonna continue playing around with my paints like this giving it a good dry brush like that until we have covered everything. But we're not covering those blue spots that you can see. This is just a good dry brush so we can get a little bit of that metallic color on it. Then after we finish with our dry brushing, we're going to let this dry really well. And then we're going to add our Madame Leota <laughs> and as you can see you can see it here and it is beautiful but let me know in the comments below what you think about this Madame Leota because I'm loving it <laughs> if you're new here thank you so much for clicking on this video I would love for you to subscribe and become part of our YouTube family <laughs> but if you're a returning subscriber you know how much I love you in the description box down below you're gonna find the links to all of my social media so you can go and check me out over there beautiful wreath and for that I'm using cardboard this this is poster board that I had in brown and I cut it in a half moon now I'm gonna use some Mod Podge and I'm gonna add here that poster board to that cardboard and that was an old box that I had that I cut that half moon you can do the same you can use any cardboard mm -hmm. you have and after that I'm gonna just glue this or glue the poster board to the cardboard make sure that it is really glued now I'm gonna take my roller from plaid and then I'm gonna flip it over and make some tabs to the back so I can flip them like this and we have a beautiful finish now I'm using my hot glue like you can see here adding hot glue and folding those tabs like that then after I finish with that and I'm gonna do both sides we will have a beautiful shape like this one now we're gonna cover that yeah <laughs> that was because I wanted a flat surface and more sturdy with this beautiful paper that I got from Craspire and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just add some Mod Podge at my beautiful paper and you will find the link for that one in the description box down below in the other side I'm gonna add another one of those beautiful papers that I got from Craspire and I'm just going to glue it with a little bit of Mod Podge like that. Then I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to cut all of that excess. And after that, I'm going to make tabs as well. So we have a beautiful finish side. And as you can see, I'm making those tabs. Then I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue over here. Then I'm going to fold those tabs like that. And after I finish folding that, I'm going to do the same to the other side. 
As you can see, we have them here. And now I have to cover that piece in the middle. And I'm just using some leftover paper from Craspire. And I'm going to add a little bit of Mod Podge over here. Then I'm going to glue them together like this. And I'm going to do the same. Cut the excess, make some tabbies. <laughs> and then I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue and glue them to the cardboard. That way we have a beautiful finished side and we cannot see that cardboard. Let me just finish with this, add a little bit more Mod Podge what I needed and do the same to the other side. Now I'm gonna take this greenery that I had, it's eucalyptus that I got a while back from Walmart as well as this beautiful peonies that I got from Walmart or mom's. I don't remember which one those <laughs> were, but I'm just going to add them like this. Then I'm going to add those beautiful eucalyptus stems with a little bit of hot glue over here. And I'm going to repeat the same steps to the other side. Let me just make that. And then I'm going to take this beautiful stems that I got from Walmart. And I'm only going to remove those thingies that it has on the back that are like twine. No twigs <laughs> and here you can see it and this one is beautiful it is a half moon and it looks so beautiful for halloween let me know what you think in the comments and we're gonna take this creepy <laughs> plaques that i got from a thrift store and as you can see this is as creepy as they come <laughs> but we're gonna give it a good paint flat black and we're gonna paint only the faces but first, we're going to remove them from those plaques. And for that, I'm just going to use one of my tools. I tried with my hands, <laughs> but they weren't coming out. So I'm just going to remove them with my tool like this. And this one will break and you will see it like that. <laughs> but after I remove them, I'm going to take them and paint them with the spray paint. And then I'm going to take that plaque and I'm going to glue it back, back together using Gorilla Wood Glue. Like this, we're going to put it together, back together. <laughs> and then I'm going to secure those pieces with a little bit of tape. So I make sure that they will move. Now that I have my figures painted, I'm going to use my patina spray. And I did that in past video and that's aqua paint with water. And I'm going to spray them really nicely. Then I'm going to just tilt them to get the excess off. And I'm going to continue doing that until they look like this. And look at that. That patina is beautiful. <laughs> and here you have the other one. And they are looking so cute. But we need to make them cuter. And for that, I'm going to take this gold paint, metallic royal gold paint. And I'm going to give it a good dry brush like this with that paint. I'm going to go all over them like this until I have covered all of those pieces and they look beautiful and look at that that dry brushing makes it look like bronze let me know in the comments below what you think about this painting technique because I'm loving it now I'm gonna do the same with the other one a good dry brush to get those beautiful details to pop and look beautiful yeah it's beautiful <laughs> now we're gonna take them and we're gonna take the plaques and we're gonna glue them back to the plaques and for that i'm just using a little bit of hot glue i'm gonna flip them over add the hot glue over here all around and then i will glue them back to the wood piece and now they look a million times better and here you can see them and they are looking so beautiful, so elegant. Let me know in the comments below what you think about those two because I love them. <laughs> and we're going to play with concrete and wood for this one. And I'm using Quickrete and as you can see, we're just opening it. And now I'm going to get a little bit of that Quickrete and I'm going to just pour it in a bowl that it is disposable i'm gonna add some water and as you can see i'm mixing and i want this mix to be wet but not so wet like mashed potatoes a little bit thinner than that <laughs> now i'm taking a glove and i'm gonna just place it on this glass that you can see here so i can fill it with the concrete and it is easier this way as you can see i'm just getting rid of the air that gets in the globe and 
glass <laughs> and playing around with the concrete so it goes to the fingers of the globe and I'm gonna keep on doing that until I have filled all of that or used all of the concrete and as you can see I'm just playing around with it well you cannot see it but that's what I'm doing <laughs> I'm playing with that globe and just filling it with the concrete like that after that I'm gonna remove that from the glass and I'm just gonna pat it down just like this and I know you cannot see completely but it's what I'm doing <laughs> I'm just patting it down but I just had to place it really quick because that quick read dries really quick <laughs> now I'm using the glass to make an imprint of that in the hand you will see why then we're gonna let it dry and after it is dry we're gonna remove the globe and I think that the finger is broken and I'm so so sad about it <laughs> but we're gonna cut that globe like that and we will see if we have a broken finger let me just remove it and yep we have a broken finger we have to fix that with more concrete after I fix that we're gonna take this palettes from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna take antique wax and I'm gonna paint them completely just by using the antique wax, uh, wax. <laughs> as a stain going around painting all of it the front the sides and all of those crevices that you can see there and also we're gonna paint the sides and this side also <laughs> well we're gonna paint it completely then we're gonna let it dry so we can come up and just place those hands onto them and I'm using those screws and I'm gonna take the hands as you can see we have two hands and I'm gonna take this drill bit and my drill and I'm gonna make holes on those hands using that drill bit and I'm gonna make also holes on the pallets let's start with the hands and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure like this just to know where I need to make my holes you can make a mark I just using my eyes like <laughs> yeah eyeballing it <laughs> and we're gonna make those holes then we're gonna take the drill bit and we're gonna make holes on our palette thingy like this then we're gonna take the hand and the screws and first I'm gonna attach a little bit of that screw to that palette to make it easier then we're gonna take our screws and let me just get the angle straight <laughs> and I'm just gonna drill them like that to the palette just like that after we have that we're gonna make the other one and that will be it and here you can see them together and they are looking so cute they look like ghostly hands trying to grab you <laughs> but they are holding a candle so they cannot <laughs> let me know what you think about this ones those are sconces in the comments below because I love them to make a beautiful sugar skull and I'm taking another one of those beautiful papers from Craspire and I'm just gonna cover this sugar skull after I remove this twine let me just remove that I grab a little bit of Mod Podge and I'm gonna add it to my sugar skull this one is from Dollar Tree and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a little bit of that Mod Podge all around it so we can just add the paper to it let me clean this up and now we can bring the paper and we can adhere that to the skull let me use the roller over here and now I'm gonna take my exacto knife from Dollar Tree as well and I'm gonna cut all of that excess paper that I have as you can see it here then I'm gonna take some sandpaper that I have over here and I'm just gonna sand those edges like this I'm gonna go all around it removing the excess then I'm gonna take this beautiful washi tape that I got as well from Craspire and look at that it is so beautiful now I'm just gonna go all around it using this one that I loved it is like a continents motif I think that's the name for that <laughs> it is vintage and it is beautiful now I'm adding this one on the top of that one and as you can see we have a little bit of excess but we will work with that a little bit later now I'm gonna take this beautiful one and I'm gonna add it over here then I'm gonna add this one to the bottom of that one and look at that so beautiful let me flip it over cut the excess with my exacto knife and then I'm gonna take this beautiful buttons that I got buttons <laughs> 
that I got from Walmart and I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna measure them over here to make sure that I have the ones that I need then I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna start cutting all of that excess paper except for the rows on the top with my exacto knife this is a little bit tedious but if you have a nice show that you want to watch like Hocus Pocus <laughs> you can just watch it while you're doing this I recommend that because this one was a little bit tedious so I'm just gonna go all around it removing all of that paper as you can see I forgot about that flower because we're gonna add those buttons that we have over there and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start sanding the excess paper using my sanding sponge no block <laughs> And I'm just gonna go all around it like that then I'm gonna take some of this antique wax from Waverly And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go all around my sugar skull over here With this brush and after I finish with that I'm gonna take a smaller paintbrush And I'm gonna go all around the things that it has in the face All those shapes and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blend that with my finger and you will see it a little bit later let me just add it over here and here you can see that I'm blending with my fingers and making sure that I have a beautiful color with that wax let me just do that all around it in all of those crevices and all of those holes and all of those shapes <laughs> and now I'm gonna cut the back of one of my buttons because we need them to lay flat here you can see them and now I'm gonna take some hot glue and I'm gonna start gluing them to the sugar skull let me just glue all of them like this go all around it like that and after I finish with that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it over and add something to hang it and for that I'm gonna use this beautiful ribbon that I have from Dollar Tree and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a little piece of that ribbon like that and I'm gonna glue it together to itself like this then I'm gonna glue it to the back of the sugar skull and that's it for this beauty let me show you and here you can see it and this one is one of my favorites but I want to know what you think so let me know what you think about this one in the comments below because yeah I'm biased <laughs> If you want to buy me some crafting supplies, you will find this link in the description box down below. You don't have to do that. You can support your favorite creator by watching, sharing, and liking their videos. But if you want to buy me crafting supplies, this link, you will find it in the description box down below. And you will get a shout out in my channel. And we're going to take this glass piece from an 8 pint by 10 frame and I'm gonna take this decal that I made with my hippo transfer and well <laughs> my hippo water slide decal <laughs> and I'm just gonna cut it like this I just added three coats of the clear spray paint and I'm gonna dip this in water and as you can see I had to use a pot because this one was big <laughs> and after it got wet for 20 to 30 seconds I'm gonna wet my glass and then I'm gonna slide it like of this so I can place it where I want it and after I have placed it this where I wanted it I'm gonna take some paper towels and I'm gonna dry it a little bit and then I'm gonna let it dry for a couple of hours so we remove all of that water from this but look at that it's looking so beautiful and high-end now I'm just going to dab that paper towel, don't rub it because you will lose your design, so just dab, dab, dab. <laughs> and after that, we let it dry and we're going to make it a beautiful border using electrical tape. And this is how it turned out. As you can see, it is beautiful and so high and I put some paper on the back so you can see it I love it and that's it for today this is everything I have for you let me know in the comments below what you think about all of this and remember to share this video with a friend because that's a free way to help this girl out it lets YouTube know that you like this type of content and it will recommend it to other beauties like yourself take care my beautiful friends bye bye